You might have seen the torture of cutting off fingers and pulling off nails in the movies that makes it uncomfortable to watch. But these Persian tortures will give you the real definition of what torture means. Welcome to History Facts, and today we dig the pages of history to see what torture was like in ancient Persia. The Persians outdo all other barbarians in the terrible brutality of their executions, adopting tortures that are both horrifying and stretched over. These death sentences are more dreadful and horrible than that of the Nazis' gas chambers. They devise some of the most imaginative and horrific punishments in history. In ancient Persia, it was a gradual, lengthy, and excruciatingly painful punishment straight out of your darkest dreams. According to historians, the main objective behind these tortures was to create an example for the people so that no one would indulge themselves in such crimes. Let's take a look at some of the brutal and barbaric forms of torture in ancient Persia. Warning, contains brutal graphics and is not for the weak-hearted. Flaying off skin alive Persecution of the offenders after enduring different forms of torture was not uncommon for offenders under the first Persian dynasty. Flaying was one of them. For severe offenses like bribery and false witnessing, the criminal was first blinded and then the skin was flayed off while they were still alive. Imagine the pain the criminal might have gone through. This didn't stop there either. At times, convicts were executed by removing the skin in strips, which lengthened the execution and caused severe suffering as each strip was ripped from the body. In case of more severe punishments, the executioner removed the entire skin in one piece. Some of the convicts were left to die of wound infections after removing a few strips of the skin. During the rule of the Achaemenid dynasty, a judge was executed by flaying for receiving bribes and a chair was upholstered out of his skin. That's not all. The newly appointed judge had to sit in a chair made of human skin. It was a daily reminder and warning of their fate if they took bribes or gave a wrongful conviction. Forced to eat the flesh of their children. Just the thought of this makes us uncomfortable. What would be the condition of the person who had been through this? This happened during the reign of King Astages in the 6th century BC. Harpagus, a Persian commander, received the cruelest penalty imaginable for the most minor offense. King Astages had a dream that Harpagus' grandson would someday usurp him. So he ordered Harpagus to take his newborn son out into the forest and abandon him to die. But instead of abandoning the child, Harpagus gave the small child to a shepherd to raise as his own. It took King Astages ten years to know that Harpagus had disobeyed him. This made him furious and took revenge most inhumanly. Astyages slit Harpagus' son's neck and chopped him from head to toe. He ordered the chefs to roast the meat. Harpagus was invited to a banquet and offered cooked meat of his son. He had no idea that his son had been discovered, brutally killed, and cooked. Harpagus came to know when Astyages ordered his servants to put the young boy's head in front of him on the table. Harpagus was well aware of the consequences of attempting vengeance and didn't even cry in front of the king who had killed his son and forced him to eat the meat of his son. Isn't it disgusting? Who does that? Only a maniac would do such an act. The Persians had crossed all the limits. Drowning in a Pool of Ashes the Persians used charcoal ashes to execute their criminals in many ways. The convict was put in an ash chamber with several feet of ash on the floor until tiredness drove him to collapse. The person would breathe ash into the lungs for many days and would die of suffocation. These prisoners were also refused food and drink and left to starve inside the chamber. The second approach involved dropping the subject into an ash tower half filled with ashes. Paddles buried in the ash were linked to wheels outside the tower, which were rotated by executioners from the outside. 
The paddles swirled the ash into the air, forcing the prisoner to breathe it in, which would eventually suffocate or cause heart failure. Around 162 BCE, it was used to execute Menelaus, the Jewish high priest in Jerusalem. Those found guilty of inciting revolt against the state or its designated authorities were frequently sentenced to death by ashes. Scafism The ancient Persians used milk and honey to kill people. Sounds weird and impossible, but it was indeed that way. A criminal sentenced to death was force-fed a milk and honey mixture before being placed in a tub-like structure or a boat. It was then covered by another boat, leaving the head and limbs visible. These boats were then smeared with the same milk and honey mixture and put afloat into a puddle of stagnant water. The milk and honey drank by the prisoner induced diarrhea and led to dehydration. That's not all. The exposed limbs and face attracted flies and other insects. The culprit would be slowly eaten alive by the biting insects, which also developed maggots in the flesh, and the corpse would start decomposing before death. The presence of urine and dung of the prisoner in the tub due to diarrhea would worsen the skin due to parasitic infection and add to the suffering. Tearing apart, tying to the trees. The ancient Persian kings had no tolerance for robbery. Such executions were for thieves. The trunk of trees were pulled together and tied. The limbs of the convict were tied to either tree. The ropes that held the trees together were then suddenly cut, and the trees snapped back to their original position, splitting the hapless robber in half. The parts of the corpse were left to hang in the trees along the empire's routes. This worked as a powerful preventative measure for other robbers who would think of robbing the travelers. Multiple Death Trials According to the concept of life after death, some of the Persian executions intended to guarantee that the wicked not only endured a horrible death on earth, but also suffered again in the afterlife. They made efforts to torture the convicts to the verge of death. The prisoner was then left to regain health or at least allowed to gather enough strength to bear the torture again. The unusual thing about this was that if an executioner was unlucky and the convict died early, then the executioner had to face torture and death himself. Chaining Dismembered People to Gates during the reign of Darius the Great and other Persian rulers, the rebellious people were first marked by chopping their noses, ears, or even blinding so they could be easily identified. Then these people were placed and chained at gates where they would suffer public humiliation and misery. Some of the more egregious offenders were transported to the king where they met the same fate. They were tortured to death, chained to the gates. People who were faithful to the king were supposed to display their loyalty by adding to the physical and mental suffering of the chained prisoners. These convicts were provided with food and water, nutrition would regenerate them, and suffering could be carried for a longer period. This didn't end there. The person providing them food or water would then add to their pain by kicking them, piercing their flesh, or beating them with fists or rods. This continued until the convicts succumbed to their injuries and died. At times, some of these convicts who were near to death were freed and nursed back to health. Then they started the torture again. It seemed to be a replica of hell on earth. Other ghastly and gruesome methods of torture in ancient Persia included crucifixion, stoning, burying alive, amputation of body parts, and putting molten metal in the throat. This was the dreadful face of torture in ancient Persia.